Dresden, capital of the German Free State of Saxony, a major center of culture with a remarkable history. The Wettener dynasty developed the old town during 800 years of power, and Friedrich August I, known as the Strong, became its most prominent figure. He also had the Zwinga, designed by the architect Purpelmann and sculptor Balthasar Pomosa. It's a kind of outdoor banqueting hall that was intended to be a meeting place of the nobility. From the outside, this area of courtly festivities was protected by a moat and was accessible via a bridge and the crown gate of the gold-plated hood. A demonstration of splendor and power in stone, the buildings contained a library, art gallery and armory. With its charming fountains and magnificent backdrop, the courtyard is ideal for a leisurely stroll and is one of Dresden's main landmarks. In 1709, between the inner and outer walls, construction began on the tournament area in front of the castle. Thus the name Zwinga. In the 19th century, Gottfried Semper built the Semper Opera no less than twice, as the first building was destroyed by fire. This magnificent building dedicated to music is one of the most glamorous opera houses in the world. The Royal Catholic Chapel in Palace Square is considered to be the last great work of Roman Baroque. August the Strong had to convert to Catholicism in order to gain the Polish crown. The residence of the Saxon electors is regarded to be a palace of treasures. Over the centuries, many well-known architects transformed the fortress into an exquisite castle. The buildings with reconstructed Renaissance facades are located around three courtyards and are overlooked by Haussmann's Tower, one of the oldest sections of the site. From Paris Square, it can clearly be seen how the late medieval castle was transformed into a four-winged building with towers in each corner of the courtyard. On the 17th of February 1945, British bombing decimated Dresden, leaving only the spirit of a once beautiful, prosperous and culturally important city. The castle was destroyed but was eventually rebuilt according to its original design and can now be seen in all of its former glory. As a center of art and science, Dresden Castle contains a number of collections that are well known throughout the world and draw international visitors to this most ambitiously conceived and successful project. Close by, the stable courtyard is the world's oldest original tournament arena of any kind. The Tuscan arched arcades originated in the Renaissance period and were used by spectators during various tournaments and entertainments.
The Procession of Princes is a work of art that features 35 Saxon dukes, princes and kings on 24,000 painted porcelain tiles. The Church of Our Lady was the most important church construction of Protestantism and indicated the center of the old town, powerful, dignified, and sublime. This symbol of civic pride is both God's house and a memorial. For 250 years, this, the masterpiece of George Barr, symbolized both prosperity and faith. The largest stone dome north of the Alps, the Peter's Dome of the Protestant faith and a monument that commemorates its founder, Martin Luther. In a single night of heavy bombing, it was destroyed, but subsequently rebuilt thanks to generous donations from around the world. A Protestant preaching church completely dedicated to the pulpit, the place of the proclamation of the Word of God, and with a magnificent pipe organ. Brühl's Terrace was raised above the casements on the former site of the Belvedere, along with its colorful flower beds and elaborate sculptures. In 1814, the park, with its dolphin fountain, was open to the public. Below is the Dresden Fortress. Sturdy walls protect this fortified structure on the banks of the Elbe, where, at the end of the 15th century, up to 700 workers labored long hours in its construction. In the vaults, battlements and gun emplacements, it's cold and damp. This is the other side of the city, militaristic, defensive. In 1707, this was where pharmacist Johann Friedrich Böttger was forced to create gold at the command of August the Strong. There was no gold, but instead brown stoneware, the basis of porcelain. Count Brühl, a follower of Friedrich August II, was presented with the Elbe Wall as a gift and had a mile-long walkway built for the nobility. The balcony of Europe, 10 meters above the banks of the River Elbe, and accessed via an external staircase from Castle Square. It's believed that merchants who settled here founded the city at the Elbe's intersection of east-west trade routes in the 12th century. From a later fortress, a castle developed, and magnificent buildings gradually appeared along the river. Here, the centuries created such beauty that this city has been described as the Venice of the East and Florence on the Elbe.